Okay. Good evening and welcome to our Zoom meeting. This is to call the Wilmette Public Board of Library Trustees meeting to order Tuesday, July 19th at 6.31 p.m. The meeting is being held via Zoom in uh, the interest of everyone's safety given the uh, uptick and increase in COVID cases. Thank you for joining us. So, Trustee O'Keefe, can we have a roll call, please? Of course. Trustee Fishman. Here. Trustee, Trustee Nealon. Here. Here. Trustee O'Keefe. Here. Trustee Riddle. Here. Here. Trustee Summer. Here. Trustee Wolf. Here. And Trustee McDonald. Here. Thank, Thank you. you. And I must say that several of the trustees will only be, you'll be hearing their voices due to internet instability. And so just so for the, so that they can participate, they are there, they are present. And we just want to make that note. At this time, we have several public members present as well as staff. Trustee Wolf, did you call him? Pardon? He just, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm here. Yes, I sit here. Okay, thanks. So, uh, Director Austin, do you want to introduce? Sure. I'm seeing, yeah, I'm seeing a number of members of the public um, and, uh, and a couple members of the staff as well. I see Marty Belfontaine, uh, Jennifer Bartel, Patsy Devono, uh, John Risco and Marcos Levy. I'm also seeing um, Mary Lawler and Renee Cox as well. Um, the next portion of our agenda item relates to public comment. Um, if anyone is interested in uh, participating in public comment, um, just unmute yourself and introduce yourself, please. Would anyone... I'm, I'm Renee Cox. I'm just observing tonight. I don't have any comments, but thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. At this time, we have, uh, does anyone else have any wish to make public comment? There appears to be another number also. I think that's yeah. Fina's because she's on voice and okay. video to okay. get better reception. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, at this time, you've got the draft of the minutes from our June 21st, 2022 regular board meeting behind attachment one. Can we have a motion? I will motion a approval of those minutes from the last meeting. Okay. Is there a second? I second. This is Tracy. Okay. So, Trustee Wolf has moved acceptance of the minutes, and Trustee Summer has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Additional discussion or questions? Being no discussion or questions, can we have a vote to approve the minutes from the June 22nd, June 2020, June 21st regular board meeting? Roll call, please. Trustee Fishman. Yes, approve. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe, yes. Trustee Riddle. Yes. Yeah. Trustee Summer. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we're going to move to the treasurer's report uh, to Trustee Summer. And uh, good evening, everybody. Can uh, first, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, yes. good. Thank you. Um, so as we've discussed in the prior meetings, uh, John Risco is working on getting the CDs redeemed and reinvested. And I spoke with John last week regarding this, and based on this discussion, his priority is to redeem and reinvest two CDs in, earning less than 1% in the special reserve fund into higher earning CDs. Now for the general fund CDs earning less than 1%, he's going to redeem them and, and 
and put them in the max safe account, which is earning about one and a half percent. Uh, instead of committing that, these funds to longer term CDs due to the uncertainty of our revenue stream, uh, I think that's a good plan of action. And then once we have a better idea when our tax bills are going out and when we will likely receive our tax revenue, at that time, we'll look into reinvesting some of these max safe funds into CDs with higher rates um, and longer, um, longer term investments. Does anybody have any question on that? Fina. Thank you, this is Fina. I wanted to just ask if you could repeat this term that they will be reinvested in the term, the parent time period. Um, the new, uh, so the, the two CDs in the special reserve fund, those are gonna be invested into CDs that will likely make probably closer to 3%. There isn't a concern for those as far as the time frame. Uh, we have enough funds in the max safe for the special reserve in order to meet more of our short-term projects. However, in the general fund, with the, with the thought of when, we're not sure when the bills will go out and when we will start receiving funds. So we don't want to tie up those CDs if we may need them to meet operating expenses, like in the six, eight months, next six to eight months. So in the max safe, it's like a money market, but it is earning a higher rate than the current, what they're earning as a CD. Oh, does, got it. Does that so help? It doesn't sound like there is a term. It doesn't sound like there is Correct. a term. Correct. On the max safe, there isn't. It's like a, mute, a money market fund. Of course. Thank you. You bet. Um, in uh, reviewing to the notes, the financial statement, Trustee O'Keefe noted that there was an increase in the biweekly payroll of about 38000 And this was due to a one-time $300 stipend paid to the employees. And this was done at the discretion of Dr. Director Austin, really to provide an extra payment to the employees due to inflation and high gas prices. And uh, Director Austin did indicate this was something a lot of the other peer libraries were doing and felt it was a good business practice to um, you know, help our employees out. Um, the cash balance in the general fund is about $8.1 million. And the cash balance in the special reserve fund is about 5.2 as of the end of um, June. Uh, let's see. Um, as, as noted in the notes that there is a net loss for the year, about 102,000, the library was about 99% of our budget. Uh, this includes some unexpected items, including the deposit on the new servers, and we still came slightly under budget. So very nicely done. Um, okay, um, in looking to next year, this is my own comment, with a budgeted deficit of $733,000, I do urge Director Austin, as well as the staff, to aim to come in at below budgeted items during the upcoming year. Careful spending will allow the library to be able to preserve its general fund reserves as long as possible while keeping any increase to the levy, while possible keeping any increase to the levy and therefore any additional burden to our taxpayers at a minimum. I will say, I think that they, they've done a great job and I just encourage them to keep doing so. Does anybody have any comments or questions? I just have one more item. Um, one uh, thing that we've been just just a question. We have we have never come over the budgeted amount, and I think this is the closest that we have come to meeting our budget. So, you know, based on past trends, we have never gone over budget, but this has been pretty close. So I think we're in good hands in terms of the spending as well as how that budget was uh, developed. You Great. won. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, my last uh, comment really has to do with, uh, I noted in the last meeting that the financial statements are gonna be presented in a way in the future that's clear and more transparent. For example, the reader should be able to easily see the current general fund and special reserve fund balances. This will allow the board members and the public to assess how we are doing to meet the goals of our financial policy. We'll also be able to monitor on a month to month basis, the fluctuations in our cash reserves. John's working on this in a way so that he will be able to print these reports directly from QuickBooks without having to cut and paste them into the current format. This will eliminate any errors um, with the cutting and pasting and I think it'll make it easier for John in the long run. 
Um, I think that I will ask at least a week before the next meeting, John to provide Anthony and me a template of how these statements might be prepared and presented. Uh, does anyone have any questions on any of the financial statements, any of the checks, uh, anything that we've discussed that I've discussed thus far? Okay. Do I have a motion um, for the bills and salaries? Sure. I will motion approval of the uh, bills and salaries check detail for June 2022. I will second. May I take roll call? Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe, yes. Trustee Riddle? Yeah. Trustee Summer? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee McDonald? Yes. So Trustee Wolf moved and Trustee Fishman seconded it and the motion passed unanimously to approve the bills and salary check detail for June 2022. Thank you. Now moving right along to ordinance action items to today. We have two and the first is the ordinance number 2022-23204 for the annual budget and appropriation ordinance for library purposes for the fiscal year 2022-2023 in tentative form. We'll turn it over to Director Austin and Tre Treasurer Summer. Um, Anthony, I'm a director. I'm happy to start and do a little intro and then I'll turn it over to you, if that's okay. Certainly, that sounds great. Thank you. You bet. Um, I first want to say I believe Director Austin's done a great job and the narrative contained in the board packet discussing the tentative budget and appropriations ordinance. I was not going to go over it in details of how it works, except to reiterate that to remind everyone that the appropriations gives the library the right to spend its funds. Throughout the year, the library uses the board approved budget as its, as its true spending guide. In the event that there are unforeseen expenses, the appropriation gives the library the legal authority to take care of these expenditures. Um, there, I just wanna make a, a note that the numbers presented in the appropriations itself, I believe will, you know, if approved will be final. There may be some minor changes to some of the other numbers, but they will not affect any of the expense appropriated numbers. There's some, I had some discussion questions, but they won't affect anything that we're talking about in detail today. Um, and then on page three of the narrative that accompanies the budget and appropriations in the second to last paragraph, the only thing that I noted was there's a discussion of appropriating funds for the near-term projects. And although we has recently have only discussed projects totaling about 500,000, uh, Director Austin will talk about why the total of 3.7 million is included in this line item. And that is all I have to say. All right, thank you, Tracy. Um, so what I will do here is kind of walk you through my narrative explanation of the budget appropriation ordinance, and then we can get into the actual document itself and any questions that you may have. So as you know, the budget and appropriation ordinance is the second step of the library's annual budgeting process following the approval of our fiscal year 22-23 budget at last month's meeting on June 21st. Um, so the first step in the process is to um, create a zero dollar budget to determine what the library needs to sustain its operations over the course of the next year. And then the ordinance, the document that we're discussing this evening, then grants us the legal authority to expend the resources um, that we have on hand. So whether it's the cash on hand, uh, the tax revenue that we receive, or any donations or other revenues that we receive, um, this, this instrument is effectively what um, establishes the appropriation. Um, so by law, we must have an appropriation in order to approve our expenses. And um, that is statutorily set forth here in the first quarter of our fiscal year. And so that's why we're here where we are. Um, the procedure is that we review this tentative ordinance this evening. We approve the tentative ordinance. The tentative ordinance then goes before our attorney uh, for final review. If we've got any updates to our calculations or anything, we, we 
put that information into that documentation. And we post the ordinance for uh, review. We've advertised the uh, public hearing that we're going to be having in advance of our uh, August 16th meeting. Um, and so we'll hold a, um, a public hearing uh, for anyone that has questions or comments about the appropriation in advance of our next board meeting. And then um, once we've completed all of our regular business at the August meeting, um, the ordinance is then up for review and approval. Um, the, the document itself, um, as I'm moving through um, the document here, um, is comprised of the following information. So you're going to see that there's a fund balance that's listed at the top of the document. Um, the fund balance um, is not an is an estimated figure. It's not an actual figure. Um, the actual figure for our fiscal year 21-22 um, fund balances will be calculated once we receive our completed audit. Uh, and that will be delivered to us um, this fall um, for your approval at the October meeting um, so that we have that in hand and can make um, appropriate decisions related to our levy, the third step in our budget process um, at the November meeting as planned. Um, so because we, we operate on a fiscal year that's different than the calendar year and different from the tax years, um, we use the 2021 levy of which we received the final agency report here in uh, June to calculate the revenues that we're going to have for fiscal year 22, 20, or 22-23. Um, and then as far as those expenditures go, um, that's, that's all related to what we have just approved here at the last June meeting. Um, in the past, the Wilmot Public Library District has approved the budget and the budget and appropriation ordinance simultaneously. Um, since I've been with the organization um, for the last several years, we have um, done these as separate documents to ensure that we understand what we're doing with each of these things. Um, uh, the contingency is, is really where the, any overage over the budget was accounted for um, as far as the appropriation goes. Um, we do still retain a small contingency line, but not at the same totals that we have in the past. Um, the formula that we're using right now for the appropriation is approximately 10% over what we have budgeted. Um, as that's typically about the variance that one might experience. And if you look at our, our, fina our finals uh, for the financials for fiscal year 21-22, you can see a couple of our lines actually did go a little bit over 100%. Um, and uh, that's why the, it's nice to have that cushion with the appropriation. Um, as you know, last month we did receive um, a substantial donation, um, and the fact that we received that donation um, gave us the opportunity to expend further um, from uh, some of our, our account lines, um, and that enabled us to provide better service to our community, and the appropriation allows us to do that sort of thing. Um, as far as the calculations go, as I said, um, the 10% buffer is what we use typically. Uh, there is one line that deviates from that um, and has year over year, and that is the grants line. Um, in the event that the library should uh, apply for and receive a grant within this fiscal year, this gives us the ability to expend the funds that we would receive from that grant, uh, so that you'll see that that line is a little bit different than the formula that we've used for the rest of them. Um, once you move down through the actual budgeted items, you will see that there is a proposed transfer to the Special Reserve Fund that's listed there. Um, it's appropriate that we would appropriate for the transfer. Um, however, there are, um, like this and the Special Reserve Fund expenditures that are below, um, there are separate actions that are required in order for us to do all of this. So just because we list something in the appropriation doesn't mean that we're approving that action. It means that we're giving ourselves the permission to take that action if we vote to do so later down the road. So what we're proposing right now is a transfer of $500,000 to the Special Reserve Fund within this current, within this current fiscal year. Um, that said, um, it, when we approved our budget um, last month, we had reviewed several items that we thought we might be able to um, do from the Special Reserve Fund in, over the course of the next fiscal year, um, whether that be uh, the 24-7 um, lockers, the updated to the phone system or the building automation system. Uh, those projects total about $500,000. And so we thought it would be appropriate to make a transfer um, to the special reserve fund to account for those expenses. Um, that said, 
each of those items is going to come before the board um, for review and approval. And just as much as such a transfer would come before the board for review and approval. So we're just giving ourselves the ability to do so without needing to amend the appropriation ordinance by adding this line item there. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Um, so that's what that transfer line means. Um, we certainly do have the ability to change that number if we wish to do so at a later date, but that's what we're targeting right now. And that follows the trend that we did last year as well with, with regards to the uh, capital improvement project that we did. Um, we made a transfer that was equal to um, the amount that we had expended on that project. Um, as far as the special reserve fund expenditures go and what we're proposing in there, um, I did share with you, again, the um, resolution amending a plan, aka the special reserve fund plan. I had um, We approved that last June, or last July, rather, July 20 of 2021. Um, that document was updated to reflect our 2020 capital reserve study project that we completed. Um, basically, what we're looking here at is an encumbrance of approximately $3.7 million um, worth of activity that would be eligible to be completed with, within the course of the next fiscal year. Um, that said, all of those projects, again, um, would need to go out for public bid, would require that we have engaged with an architect, that we have plans, um, and that we would go out to bid. Um, on that project, that we would receive full approval for all of those things, and then have to receive um, invoices for um, and to expend those items in order for that uh, expenditure to take place. So again, um, just because we're encumbering funds of 3.7 million in the special reserve expenditures line of this appropriation ordinance does not mean that we're going to do those actions. It just gives us the ability to do so if we vote to do so down the road. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> Um, so that's the page three of my narrative. Question, Anthony. Yes. Would it to renovate interior space and update furnishings? That gets a lot of uh, evaluation and assessment needs to happen. <laughs> Would you ever do that in a two phase, like half a million this year, and then see what happens in terms of polling the audience? Because to put, how did you come up with that number? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there could be several projects associated with that. Um, <clears throat> it wouldn't necessarily just be one item. Yes. Okay, because I think a little more details need. I'm just curious because, you know, this is the first time we've seen a number with it that I can recall, and it may have come through. Um, so that's no, actually, this is identical to what we did last year. Okay, but I'm just curious in terms of all in one phase when not much has been done to even look and do an assessment. That's all my thought. That's all the, my only thought. Certainly, and under each of those individual line items, there would probably be phases for each of them. Um, and, and projects um, like the project that we did last year had multiple bid processes associated with it, even though it was one single project. Um, there are different trades that are engaged, and so there would be different phases <laughs> to a project. So yes, um, again, these would all be things that the board would review. Um, we would have to have conversations with our architect. We would be having committee meetings and likely discussion in our regular meetings about this topic as well. But I think the first place to start, and that gets back to the strategic plan, is that, granted that a lot of the comments were regarding space, but I think this is where it's important to do a, a, a survey that just focuses on space needs and priorities of the patrons. So that's all I want to add in terms of before this gets going. Okay. Certainly. And we'll discuss that very point as the next item on um, that we discuss okay. here this evening. Yes. Thanks. All right. Any other questions about the uh, special reserve fund appropriation? Uh, Fina. Yes. I wanted to ask, um, you know, kind of what your perspective is on the level of um, the special reserve fund without the transfer. So without the transfer of 500,000 from the general fund to the special reserve fund to cover those proposed projects that we've discussed, um, what would be your perspective on the level of the special reserve fund and covering those projects without, without that special transfer? Well, um, if we uh, Director Austin, Oh, I can I can actually start answering this if you'd like. Go ahead. You know, Fina, I think that's a great question. That's a great question. And 
um, I think that the level, the current level, what did I say was uh, 5.2 million. And I think that before we determine whether to do any transfer, I think uh, one of our community members had mentioned previously whether it was really prudent to transfer those funds over. And I think it's something that when the time comes, we should talk about. You know, we may, it give, I think you know, your, the question is, it gives us the ability to transfer the 500,000, but we as a board may decide we don't wanna transfer anything, that we would like to keep that, those funds within the general reserve. Um, based on the current funding. It's just something that allows us to do it based on the policy, but you know, we may decide as a group, we don't wanna do that. Does that help answer your question, Fina? Yeah, sort of. I mean, I just kind of wanna get your perspective though, still on our current ability. Like it doesn't seem like our special reserve fund is compromised in any way to not, you know, kind of cover those proposed projects currently. So like, yeah, you know, absolutely. What would you are, I would say you're correct, um, but but it kind of goes hand in hand. Well, we could transfer nothing. We we really don't have to transfer anything. But I think part of the, we'll do this all. I think in together, considering you know we have operated a deficit, and um, trying to get to our financial policy goal of maintaining one year's worth of, um, of assets mm -hmm. in our general reserve fund. Um, Am I frozen or can you guys still hear me? No, we, uh, we can hear you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, so I think that's something we have to consider by operating at a deficit, as well as being mindful of getting to our the balance in our financial policy, which is one year's worth of expenses, kind of thinking about those two things at the same time when we do talk about the transfer. And you're right, we may it may not be worth encumbering an additional 500000 in the special reserve. But it allows us to it kind of, I think the goal is to kind of get us to where our financial policy at about 6 million in our special reserve. And we are currently at 8.1. So we do, you know, with a, with a, with a um, projected deficit of 700,000, we'd get down to, you know, in the 7 million range. So we'd be getting there, but um, and with the additional 500,000, that brings us down further. So, you know, it's, Fina, I think your comments are worthwhile and definitely thinking about when we talk about doing the transfer, when we actually talk about doing it. Right. But I mean, right now we're considering, you know, allowing for it. And I just think it doesn't sound like I'm hearing, I think I'm understanding that we don't have our ability isn't compromised, our, our ability to cover those special projects with the current special reserve level. Um, you know, is not a problem. And so that's what I fear is that we're adding a, a, an amount to the appropriations that may not be, the, you know, the, I feel like we've discussed the other projects, we've discussed, um, you know, the other budget items or expense items. I don't know if this, these special projects, this amount might be appropriate to add to our appropriation, to be necessary, I think at this time to add. I fear that it, it almost seems like we're, you know, you know, what's your, what's your perspective on, you know, that it's inflating the number a bit, inflating our appropriations or number for the special reserve there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I hesitate not to put anything in there because if we do, we cannot transfer anything. So I hesitate to put nothing. I can't remember what the amount that we put in the appropriations last year for the ability to transfer, but we didn't transfer what we, I think, Anthony, if you look up what we appropriate, last year we might have appropriated, we'll say $3 million. I'm not sure what we appropriated, but we didn't, we didn't appropriate, we didn't actually transfer the amount. We transferred a much less, as much smaller amount than what we <laughs> originally talked about. So I guess I, I mean, I see your point. Why put anything in there? But if we don't put anything in there, we can't possibly transfer anything. We can't do it, right? Maybe I just think it's kind of a cover your cover yourself. Uh, does anyone else have a thought That's on this? I think I understand your point, but my understanding is that you know special reserve expenses are are approved by the board, are approved by by the trustees, but it doesn't. I don't think is it because we haven't earmarked these projects in the special reserve fund currently? That's not my understanding. I think my understanding is that we'd still be able to fund these special projects if 
that amount to 500,000 with our current level of our special reserve. Okay, um, th that's true. We have the funds in our special reserve at this time to cover that 500,000. But, um, so we do, that is correct. But last year, thank you, John, for that. We appropriated $3.7 million to be cover. That's always, again, the goal was to get our, I think when we did it last year was to get our um, balance on our general fund closer to our financial policy of $6 million. But when it came time to actually do the transfer, we didn't approve that. We, as the board said, we don't want to transfer 3.7 million. We transferred something in the $1 million range. Um, I, you know, I, I value others' perspectives. I mean, I think that we should have it in just to be on the safe side in case we want to. I don't feel, you know, when the time comes, mm -hmm. we necessarily would. I, I agree. I, we may or may not. But I do would be interested to see what other people think about that. And the appropriation. And so that was just, just, I think that's just what I wanted. We can obviously t discuss this as a board later. I just, I think I wanted to. anybody else want to give their opinion? Kind of plant the sure. The appropriation just gives us the freedom to do so. It's, it's not as if we are obligated. We have the freedom to move that money or to utilize that money. But if you don't put it in the appropriation, you won't be able to, if your project were to exceed your special reserve fund, you won't be able to do it. So and that's not my understanding. We would be able to. I think that if we were to present, if the, if the staff were to present a project to the board um, in the amount of something that we could cover from the special reserve fund, and that would well, be- I um, guess, what is the concern of including it in the tentative appropriation? Um, the ability that we have already, the amount, the level of our special reserve fund is, is sufficient. And the fact that we, I think the appearance of it, of the, of the appropriation ordinance being possibly inflated by that amount. Okay, I, I understand your perspective. From my perspective, I think it's, it's prudent to allow freedom and wiggle room. If you don't put it in the appropriation, you can't transfer it. It's too late, right? It's There's too late. Turning back. So then all you're working with is what is in your special reserve fund. That is my understanding. And I agree with Marianne and with um, uh, uh, the point that, that, again, all we're doing is taking a resource we have as a library board um, to have it at the ready in case we need it for some reason, either foreseen or unforeseen. And it would be, in my mind, not prudent to, to not activate that possibility. All we're doing is keep, presenting a possibility for ourselves to, to serve the library and the community uh, in a more immediate fashion. And I, I think of it as a safety net because it's an old building and things fall apart and we never know what's going to happen down the road. So that's what I see it as. I think the board will evaluate anything that comes up in terms of looking at cost benefit analysis before it is approved. But I just see it as a reserve, as a safety net right. in terms of just transferring it sort of like your savings account or your investment account that you might keep that you build up over time because you never know what's going to happen. And I think those are all valid points, but the appropriation ordinance is what the, you know, our dollar amount ends up being that, you know, we, and these possibilities of these projects, I think are very important, but we have a special reserve fund that I believe covers the amount that you, I think are saying that, you know, things could pop up. It allows us our current, Special Reserve Funds allows us to, I think, cover um, unexpected capital costs. We also have a capital analysis mm -hmm. that has given us the ability to uh, project uh, the costs that we, you know, propose or expect from any, you know, capital issues or, you know, building issues that we may have. We also have insurance that could cover any, uh, you know, pop-up damage that we don't expect. Um, I understand, and I I am for the you know, project that are proposed in the 
in the transfer. I just don't think the transfer is necessary at this time. And and I don't mean to kind of belabor the point. I just kind of want to bring up those, you know, points of consideration. And um, I think, you know, other other than that question and other other than that kind of point of discussion that I wanted to have, you know, kind of with the with the trustees here, I um, I have no objection to the the tentative budget and and appropriation ordinance. So anyway, that that's you know, Fina, point. I appreciate your comments because I um I'm, I appreciate your comments because I think you know whether if we I I think we should include it, but I do think this is really important when we have Andrew Kim put in do he's going to do those um, projections again in the uh, fall before we do the levy. And I think having your comments, you know, we'll, we'll put through whether in this different scenarios, not always put in the 500,000 as a possible transfer, you know, one of those, cause you know, he puts in all like flat levy, decreased levy, increased levy, but to your point, <laughs> we can also have him put in a transfer or no transfer too, as part of the projection. That makes sense, Tracy. Right. Look at it from a number of different ways. But once, if we don't, do, like we've always said, if we don't do it, there's, there's the options aren't even possible. Right, we're not committing to and it right now. We're just what I'm what comfortable with. To, Sorry, go ahead. Go we ahead, need Athena. to kind of clear that. We need to clear that point up. Um, without the transfer, we do have the ability to to pay this to cover the five hundred dollar pro projection of these projects. Five hundred thousand. That's my understanding. That's what Tracy mentioned. Yeah. Level of the special reserve yeah. fund could we cover do. this five hundred thousand. That is, that is correct. But what I'm saying is to take into consideration your to take into your point. We yes, we have the funds in the current special reserve fund to do it. However, that what I was suggesting is kind of a compromise is when we do those analysis, is although we have it in the appropriations of a transfer for 500, make sure Andrew Kim puts in there these projections without uh, without the transfer and perhaps with the transfer to see what does that effect have on getting our, for example, our general reserve funds down to closer to our financial policy of one year. And, and perhaps you're right, Fina, maybe it's just not financially prudent because we need to preserve those in the general fund. But I think the point is at this point, keeping it in may just be on the safe side. It really may not be necessary, but I think it is probably prudent. Sure. And I think, you know, the attorneys will review this. Maybe they'd consider these comments as well. Um, but I, I certainly just wanted to, to bring it up, um, you know, as a board. Thank you. Thanks so much. Oh, oh, and thank you. I appreciate your comments too, Fina. And that's all. Thanks. Director Austin, I'm turning it back over to you. <laughs> thank you all. Um, okay, so moving down the, the line um, on to section seven, the special funds, not to be confused with the special reserve fund. The special funds are um, the IMRF FICA, um, the audit expense fund and the liability insurance fund. I just wanted to note there that we do have a little bit of a change on that liability insurance line. You may recall in the past that we had divided the expenditures of our liability insurance across um, both the general fund and the special funds. Um, when we approved the budget this year, we eliminated that line item in the budget for the liability insurance. So we've added that additional 28,000 or so to this line and this appropriation incorporates, um, yeah, incorporates that. So um, that change has been made there and, and that's how we've arrived at, at our bottom line figure that you're looking at here. And that basically uh, concludes my review of the document. Are there any other questions or comments about the tentative appropriation ordinance? Okay, so um, the next step in the process is for us to um, make a motion to approve this document in its tentative form 
which then um, gives us the direction to move forward with the review with the attorney and to get the documents posted um, for the public. Um, I will move approval of ordinance number 2022 23-204 annual budget and appropriation ordinance for library purposes for the fiscal year 2022-23 in, as you noted, Anthony, tentative form as presented and discussed, which I think, again, was a great discussion. Second. Is there a second? I, I will second that. It's Trustee Nealon. It's been approved. It's been moved by uh, Trustee Wolf and seconded by Trustee Nealon to move to approve of the ordinance number 2022-23-204 annual budget and appropriation ordinance for library purposes for fiscal year 2022-23 in tentative form as presented. Is there any other discussion? Being none, can, okay, okay. Being none, can we have a roll call, Trustee O'Keefe? Of course. Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle. Yes. Trustee Summer. I'm sorry, Trustee Summer, I didn't hear you. She she, she lifted her finger up because I think her voice has gone out. Okay. Uh, she has given the thumbs up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Trustee Wolf. Thumbs up, yes. <laughs> Trustee McDonald. Yes. Thank you. The motion passed unanimously. Okay. At this time, we're going to turn it over to uh, trustee, Trustees Nealon and Wolf regarding the Intergovernmental Cooperation Committee Sustainability Coordinator Action. And everyone had got a, got a copy of this earlier. And so at this point, would you like to talk a little bit about it? Trustee Nealon and Wolf, Trustees Nealon and Wolf. Trustee Nealon, you wanna go first? I will. Um, three scenarios were presented and you have that um, document in front of you. The first um, uh, concern uh, had to do with uh, how a sustainability coordinator services would be shared among all of the governmental bodies. Um, the Park District and District 39 in the village were very much um, ready to move forward. Um, and uh, Stuart, as you know, uh, we were pretty much up front, up front about how we didn't really have a, a full backing of our board and uh, neither did uh, Avoca, uh, Avoca, District 37. And um, so we actually talked about um, can um, this uh, position be fulfilled if uh, some of the uh, bigger spenders, the park district and the village and um, D39 like were to put more finances into it. So uh, uh, trustee, uh, village trustee Kate Jaya came up with this plan along with um, some help. And um, there are three scenarios for us to consider right now. Um, and I think we talked about a few of us, um, not really um, at any sort of meeting, but um, I know we were all considering um, what value it, it would be to the library specifically. And since we do such a fantastic job with sustainability, we thought that we wanted to keep our percentage pretty low. So um, as you look over these three scenarios, I would just like to ask what people think. Well, actually, um, and we did discuss this, this directly at the last board meeting. I'm, I'm wrong to say that it wasn't at a meeting. We did discuss this. So um, um, Trustee Wolf, do you have anything to add? The only thing is it's in the document, but the thing that I thought was interesting that we had, we had raised at the, at the intergovernmental meeting was that um, um, uh, Mike Brayman, the, uh, the village um, manager, had said that there are precedents for other kinds of shared uh, resources like this uh, across government body, bodies like the ones that are meeting. And so, so, um, so that's I think that there's a, already a template in place that that both the park district and the village will met are comfortable with in terms of shouldering uh, the bulk of the expense. Uh, what do you? I'll think of the scenario number three, where uh, 
we sh we share um, what percent about two percent of the expense and uh, enjoy about two for two percent of the services, which can be uh, broken down, I believe, in at an hourly rate, if I'm not wrong. Trustee Riddle has had her hands up. Trustee Riddle, you want to speak, and then I'll get back to you, Trustee Neal, and not to. Oh, thanks. So, you know, I my perspective is that we would take scenario one. Um, I, I just Trustee I, Riddle, it's hard to hear you. Please. I can't. I, I was going to say I, I, my perspective is I favor scenario one. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. I can't really envision, um, you know, what type of role we would be able to utilize the coordinator at the library. Plan some, you know, maybe staffing would would be open to planning some type of sustainability event, you know, some type of like, you know, climate change education or um, prudent environmental practices or, you know, sustainability, what it define it, define the different, you know, kind of, and maybe it'd be kind of an educational resource rather than us um, contributing to the role or the services of a sustainability coordinator for the village. That's I, all. Okay. I like, this is Trustee McDonald. I, wait a minute, am I, yeah. I personally like scenario three and my objections first were one, what would it cost? What would we get out of it? And I think that if I'm looking at the cost of a consultant, that's probably about one week. Well, that's ch cheap consultant. I think the cost is not an issue, but I think cooperation with the other government entities is a plus for it. And I know uh, Marcos Lee, and I don't want to mess with that, is in charge of our sustainability program at the library, the facility, you know, in terms of operations. But I know that he has a lot of things that he handles. And I think that one of the benefits would be that the library could take advantage of the collective knowledge of uh, mm -hmm. the uh, staff member. And I think it might facilitate, and I have no clue how it might work, some of the areas where we might cooperate. So those are my thoughts, because I thought it was a pretty low level investment for what we might uh, get out of it. Sorry, Trustee McDonald, to build on your point and what Trustee uh, Riddle said, um, that was what we talked about was that this coordinator um, would have a lot of uh, work to do on behalf of the village and the park district, which is why they would pay for most of it. But by being in a position to kind of coordinate efforts, as you're asking about, uh, Fina, um, then they'd be able to put together some integrated uh, efforts that, that, again, the library is a place, a source of information, a source of some education programs that could then be promoted by the park district, by the village. So there's ways to create some synergies that this coordinator mm -hmm. could do um, in a way that I think touches on, again, what you both just said, Trustee McDonald and Trustee Riddle. So, and, and doing it in, with, with uh, option three. As I said, this, the village and the park district will, will have a big use for this for this individual, but not in any way shortchanging what the library could benefit from and offer to the community. I agree. Well put, Trustee Wolf. I, I'd go with scenario three. I think it it keeps our fingers in in what's happening, but without the expense and um, and so many hours. I guess the only thing I had a concern is kind of who who follows the time commitment of the uh, is this, I presume it's someone from the village that would oversee the time commitment is is equitable. Yes, because they already have that template in place for this other. Oh, okay. As you benefits coordinator, please. yeah. So, <laughs> so um, that would work, and that would be obviously very transparent. So, if there are any questions about it, the other thing too is if we decided, or one of the other entities decided they needed more time from the coordinator, then then we, th th that there's ways to kind of increase that coordinator's time and, and change the uh, financial expense at the same time uh, as well. And that could be a fluid thing; it doesn't have to be a fixed commitment. We might decide we've got a month where we need more of that coordinator's time. And uh, and then then other than than the rest of the year, uh, so it, it seems like again an Thank additional you. yeah. 
uh, just an additional way to create synergy within the within the uh, broader um, government agencies that they could all benefit from this. Director Austin, do you have a perspective on, you know, from a time commitment, what works best for the library and, and your needs and staff? Um, thank you, Trustee O'Keefe. Um, I, I kind of side with scenario three. I think, um, I, I believe that my position is kind of aligned with what the conversation has been here. Um, I think that intergovernmental cooperation is, is the name of this committee. And I think that um, there is, a, um, while we are um, able to accomplish a lot within our organization to promote sustainability, and we've been recognized um, as taking a lead in that um, in the village um, in some capacities with a number of the installations that we've done to our facility over the course of the past several years. Um, I do think there's still room for us to continue to grow um, with that regard and having access to a consultant who's an expert in this matter um, within the village, um, even at about 45 hours a year, which still is actually a pretty significant amount um, at just $2,000, which I think is really not that much of a commitment for us. Um, we can certainly afford to do that and to be a team player with the other agencies in the village and still benefit from um, you know, the, the, the conversations that are taking place there while not shouldering the burden of trying to, you know, pay for the whole position itself. So I think it's, you know, that last scenario really does kind of hit the sweet spot. And I, I like the, the kind of equitable distribution of um, how they've allocated those funds across the, the hours and whatnot. So that's kind of where I would land and kind of piggybacking off of what um, Trustee McDonald was saying. It's true. Um, we do have a, a facilities and safety manager who is looking after these matters with me. Um, we're going to make this part of our strategic plan um, as we go forward. We've been talking about that over the course of the past couple of years. That's been on our back burner um, wish list for the next strategic plan. Um, so this gives us the ability to build that in for ourselves um, as the library, but also to, to benefit from what the village um, is doing with, the, with its partner agencies. So that's kind of where I land, scenario three. It looks like a win-win for the money. with scenario three. Is there any other discussion? Any different points of view that haven't been expressed? Okay. Can we have a motion? Sure, I'll, I'll motion um, that we approve option number three for, um, uh, for this intergovernmental uh, sustainable sustainability coordinator uh, position. Trustee Fishman will second. May I do roll? You're on mute, Lisa. I need to read the motion. It's been moved by Trustee Summer and seconded, no, Trustee Wolf and seconded by Trustee Fishman to approve scenario three, where the village and park district would fund most 92% of the sustainability coordinator position. The remaining 8% would be split evenly between the other four government entities for a nominal yearly cost as presented. Now, can we have a roll call? Is there any other discussion? Okay, now can we have a roll call? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Fishman? Yes. Trustee Nealon? Yes. Trustee O'Keefe, yes. Trustee Riddle? Uh, no, I, I want option one, I think. Trustee Summer? Hands up. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, that's a yes. Uh, Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee McDonald? Yes. Thank the you. Motion. Thank you. The motion passed six in favor, uh, one nay. It, okay, thank you. Moving right along, we're now going to talk a little bit in terms of discussion items, in terms of the strategic plan update and discussion of next steps. And what uh, Director Austin did was put a brief summary of where we are with the key objectives. And do you want to talk a little bit more about that, Director Austin? 
Thank you. Um, so I wasn't able to complete this task to put in um, an attachment in your packet. What I will provide to you separately um, is a compilation of information that I've shared with you previously. So the first piece is um, what I would have attached to the to this item in our packet is um, the community survey summary that we discussed at last month's board meeting. Um, that's on our website. If you go to About Us Community Survey Summary, you can see the results of the document there. It's also in print around the library. Um, what I would also have appended to that um, that document is a table that shows um, our current or rather prior strategic plan document. Um, goal by goal, objective by objective, what we've completed and what we think remains an ongoing goal. Uh, this will help us to um, looking at the response that we've received to date regarding the strategic plan, determine which of these items um, are like, you know, a one time one and done type thing that we're completed with and which of them are actually activities that are part of our overall operations that we feel we want to include in the strategic plan language going forward. Um, so what I'll do is I'll have a table that will kind of in a, in a real neat one page summary reflect that information. And then um, I will also append to that the narratives that I've included for you um, as I've been doing these updates, um, whether monthly or even annually showing you um, where, where we've accomplished that. So you can see kind of some specifics as far as which items we've actually accomplished and how we went about accomplishing those objectives. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. But, but back to the community survey study, uh, or summary rather, um, we did learn, as we mentioned at the last meeting, that there are three key items um, that came out of that, that, that summary. And as we talked about moments ago here with the BNA, um, one of those items that keeps coming up over and over again and relates to our capital infrastructure is the space in the building. The building is, is really um, the physical representation of what the library services represent in the community. And a lot of folks have an interest in the development of the building and the way that we use our spaces in here going forward. And there was a lot of, there was a range of responses that we received in that strategic plan summary um, documentation. And what we'd like to do as part of this process going forward, our next step of the strategic plan is for us to have another survey to go out and speak specifically about the use of the space in the building so that we can get more feedback from the public about how they think we should be using the spaces inside the library. And then um, what I think, so we can conduct a survey related to that. Yeah, go ahead, Lisa. But at the same time that we're doing a survey, we're going to have the option of doing uh, in-person and Zoom groups that they can sign up for where they can articulate a little bit more in terms of what their space needs, what their space priorities are, so that you get a little bit more in-depth discussion than just the survey. And, I, and so that's what I see as the next step. And, and I know one of the system one of our north shore libraries has done that and, and uh, you know and while you don't get a lot of people to come to it and you get far more response with the uh survey i think it's important to open it up for public discourse regarding space and what their vision is for what the space needs are and space is two pronged you've got the staff space issue in terms of not enough space to house staff but this would just focus more on the public but both of those will be considered, I think, when we do the strategic plan. I think that's a good idea. Um, I'm wondering if we could maybe invite people, um, you know, not just with an email or um, uh, an announcement, but like we could maybe personally invite people to come and, and uh, share their, their thoughts with us um, and really listen. I think that's a good idea that I think sometimes and, and then some, those that can't but also when you do the survey out, I think you can you provide that option to just sign up and I think people are used to zoom and I think you can comfortably talk to about seven people. On a zoom call where you get feedback more than seven, but you need to over index but that's more that's details that we don't even need to go into at this stage of the game, then after that I think the next step would be to get all of. The trustees together looking at the results of space but also looking at the accomplishments thus far of what's happened through uh director austin's objectives and his strategies and based on that original session we had with the staff what are what we see are the priorities that have come out based on the survey as well as that discussion 
and then go bring it back out and just not as detailed and then send it back out to the public saying these are, is there anything missing? What else might you want and do the same format so that you get, and as well as probably have some staff meetings. Right, so there's a couple different to react to that right. So that you get their opinion to what we've put together to see if there is anything missing. So excuse the phone call, but that's where I see it going. Do you all have other thoughts as to what's missing and what process, anything else you might add in the steps? Okay, there's time. I think you've covered it, Lisa. Okay. Okay, that's where we are. So we can move on <laughs> and thank if you. you can, can you hear me? Yes. Tracy? You're muted again, Tracy. You're muted again. We could hear you briefly. Okay, we'll try this again. Oh. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, shoot. <laughs> you wanna put it in chat? Maybe I'll just summarize what I've said and then you all can give additional feedback as to what your thoughts are. Does that work? Okay. That's a good idea. Thank you. Okay. Now it's time to just basically talk about the director's report, Director Austin, and we're glad you're back. Thank you. And hope you take it slow. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> it's good to be here. Thank you all. Um, I'm going to try to keep my report brief tonight, and then we can address any specific questions that you may have in here. Um, so the, the key point that I want to to drive home this evening is that this report is for June of 22, um, which is effectively the last month of our fiscal year. Um, so right now, staff and I are in the process of compiling statistics from the past fiscal year in an effort to put together our response to the Illinois Public Library Annual Report, aka IPLAR, um, which will come before you here um, at the August meeting for your review and approval um, so that we can be able to apply for our grant opportunity, our per capita grant and any other opportunities that um, have that annual report as um, a contingency. So, um, so far what I'm seeing, and while I don't have my final numbers to share with you all, um, you do have some snapshot numbers in my report that you can take a look at. And the first one that I wanted to share with you is overall our circulation is performing really strongly as I've been reporting to you month over month. Um, we are um, just about between 87 and 89% of where we were pre-pandemic. So um, there is a document that's appended to my report that kind of is a table that shows you um, the four fiscal years, um, the one prior, the two full pandemic years, and then the current fiscal year that we just closed. Um, and you can see how our numbers are trending there. And as I said before, we're averaging about 87 to 89% of where we were um, uh, in our, our pre-pandemic years, which is pretty great. Um, so we're thrilled about that. Um, a couple right, other items. May I ask one question that actually uh, Trustee Summer uh, had sent to me about uh, circulation um, as it pertains to some of those different uh, the tables and information, or would you ask that at the end of your uh, presentation? Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, Tracy Summer had wanted to know when you look at those different documents, um, it shows that there were only 19 um, in-person checkouts. Is that a typo or is that uh, correct? I guess the numbers for the automated systems were larger. You're referring to this document here. There's a 19 that's listed there. It's a yes. special. It's a special category within the department. It's not our total circulation. The total circulation is the physical circulation that's in bold below that at 31,723. The okay. 19 is an internal number. It, it's not not to be confused. Thank you um, for the clarification, and I apologize. It was just uh, one of those. It was like a really strange little number. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're we're experimenting with some different ways of reporting the data, and there are some fields that don't always make immediate sense when we're trying to relate them. So one of my goals as we move forward is to work with my staff to try to find um, which communication tools we can use best to convey the actual activities that are going on. 
Um, uh, for example, um, our new digital services manager, Lauren Kelly, is working to update the digital services report. That's the spreadsheet that lists all of our, our databases. Um, and subscription resources, as well as the digital circulation, which by the way, is not part of the total circulation numbers that you're seeing there. The physical circulation is what that 31,000 for the month is. Um, that does not include Canapa, Canopy, Hoopla, Overdrive, all those resources. So there's, there's, there's ways that we can improve upon this reporting and I wanna zip it up and make it easy so that you'll be able to explain it to your constituents more clearly. Um, but in any event, um, the numbers are looking really strong um, from where we've been, and we're really excited about, about those outcomes. Um, I'm going to try to get back my thoughts here about where what I wanted to share with you. Um, so um, I, the circulation is trending nicely. Um, the, the questions that we're getting asked at our public service desks are also, it's really exciting to see where that's going. We're actually 38% over where we were last year. So 138% of the questions that were asked um, in the prior fiscal year, which is pretty outstanding. That means that our door counts are up. There's more people coming in the building and the folks that are coming in the building are interacting with our staff at a greater rate than they have in the past. Um, so that's all really exciting for us. Um, the same is true of our program participation and I'll have some final programming numbers for you as well. Uh, the salient point that I wanted to share with you is that Youth Services really is leading the charge with a lot of our programming. Um, we presented, for example, 40 programs here in the past month, and they were attended by over 1,500 people. And that's pretty remarkable given where we're at right now. <clears throat> but it's not just the young people who are responding to our programs. Um, a number of our adult programs are really going well as well, whether it's our, our book discussion groups, um, our events like what we had with um, Eva um, for the house program that we did. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. I just need to pause for one second. <coughs> I get really excited and I want to share a lot of information with you, but I've, I'm recovering here and I'm, I'm kind of losing my voice. Um, our study rooms are, are up in use as well, but I was also mentioning some of the programs that we posted um, for the public this, this, this last month. Um, <clears throat> Armchair Travels continues to perform really well. Um, our Friday night jazz concert, I talked a little bit about that at the last board meeting. We had 87 attendees to that event, and it, was, it really drew a lot of attention and had a write-up in the Chicago Tribune as well. Um, right after our board meeting last month, we had a 50-minute a Hamlet presentation by the Shakespeare Project that attracted 75 patrons, and we held that out on the lawn, and that was one of our strongest participations in an event like that. Um, if you excuse me, I think my voice is, is kind of wearing out at the moment. Does anyone have any questions or comments about any of the content in my director's report? I'd be happy to, to comment on any of those items. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Director Austin. At this time, if you've got any questions, email him or call him <laughs> Thank in you. a couple I'm, of days. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound so miserable. No, 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 no. <laughs> email him or call him in a couple of days. Um, right now, we've got the committee reports. Trustee Nealon? I have nothing except for um, just I noted that the ILA is having their annual conference on uh, October 18th to 22nd. It's uh, far away, but uh, if anyone is planning for the fall, that's what's, what the dates are. Okay, thank you. And uh, perfect. Moving on. To, and I just sent something out, but it's not new business. It's uh, basically United for Libraries is having a virtual conference and you get a discount. But I think if you've got the time and if you're around, it's a good course and they've got some interesting topics. And I sent that out, I think either yesterday or today, if you don't get it. And if you're a member of ALA, I think it's a reduced fee, but I don't think the cost is pretty nominal. So keep that in mind. Communication, I think, uh, do we want to put on hold for right now, Director Austin, in terms of communication? Um, there was one comment that we okay. received in our comment box, and I'll, I'll share that with you here this evening. Apparently, um, yesterday, we had a, a patron who wrote a note to you, and I will scan this and send this to you all. Apparently, um, someone is, is cutting out the crossword puzzle in the New York Times, and um, 
they want us to take some action related to that um, and wanted you to be aware that someone is stealing that page of the paper. So we're going to have to do a better job of trying to secure that and keep people <laughs> from ripping it out. I just want to publicly comment that um, the newspaper is there for everyone to use. And if you'd like to use the crossword puzzle, um, it's 10 cents to make a copy at the photocopy machine. Please do that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And right now we're bringing up IPLAR, the board minutes, and it's a requirement of the Illinois Public Library annual report. And it needs to be done prior to our August 2022 meeting. Trustee Nealon and Trustee O'Keefe have agreed to uh, review the minutes. And when do you think, I owe you one set, but Director Austin, when do you think they'll be ready? Second week in August? Yeah, that, that sounds okay. good. So in terms of just planning on it for the second week in August. Thank you. Uh, we already talked about the ILA conference and then you've got the time frame that uh, Trustee Nealon mentioned. Is there, are there, and at this point, let us have a uh, new business. And at this point, just to confirm the time for the August 16th, 2022 regular meeting and hearing, we generally will be here, what, 30 minutes before? or 30 minutes or 15, Director Austin? Um, the, the public hearing starts at our regular meeting time of 6.30 p.m. Okay. And um, we hold the, the, the public comment portion of our meeting is open on, um, until we receive comments and all the public comments have been received. If we don't receive anyone who wishes to speak, we typically keep the floor open for a good 10, 15 minutes before we convene our regular business. Okay. And at this point, the announcements have gone. The announcement has been published because of the time frame by uh, the library. Is there any other new business? Um, I have new business. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, regrettably, I have to step down from the library board as a trustee uh, as of uh, July 31st of this year. Um, it has been a great pleasure and thrill that you guys all voted to have me to rejoin the board when you did, and I, I can't tell you how uh, how, mad, how sad it makes me feel to have to step down right now, but uh, just due to my life circumstances, I am moving two blocks outside of the Wilmette border into Evanston, and so that uh, my house in Wilmette will go up for sale in August, so I, I'm still resident of, of Wilmette through August but I'm paying taxes, um, but I know to be officially correct, I unfortunately have to step down. And I just wanna say it's uh, uh, the passion and the enthusiasm and the dedication that all of you as fellow board members show to me uh, uh, is so encouraging to be for the future of the board and the library and what we can do on behalf of the community. And, and that obviously goes for Director Austin as well. And even though he's lost his voice a bit tonight, um, the one thing I do want to say, and I think this is in a way preaching to a, a very uh, smart choir, um, I think it's become harder and harder for a library board and a library to function in the world we're in today um, with uh, the challenges that, that, are, that are in the news often. Um, and, and I think it's very important for first and foremost, to hear everybody's voice. But I think it's also important to measure how loud a vocal minority might be uh, as a way to possibly skew um, what is what is the, the mass, the representation of the majority of, of our community on things. And so I, uh, as I step down, I, I look forward to the library board staying strong um, and, and, and listening to everybody, but at the same time, making sure you measure the, the vocal quality of what you're hearing um, to make sure that we're responding in a way that's for the majority of the community when there are uh, issues that, that come in conflict. I look at, unfortunately, what's happened in, in Niles Library right now with the board not even able to appoint a seventh board member uh, because of uh, issues. And there are many forces out there obviously trying to take away uh, library boards. And, I, and from my experience and what we do here at Wilmette, I think we do so much uh, in terms of serving the community uh, and making this library um, better and stronger and, uh, and a continued gem of, 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 the, of the North Shore area. So um, I, I, again, I wish I could stay on the board. I want to, I will be active in other ways to try to support the kinds of things we as volunteers do and to make sure we do that as to best represent um, the community. And again, in your case, support uh, the library, Director Austin and the community uh, all as a whole entity. So, so thank you. Trustee Wolf, you know, I've worked with you the longest on the board and I have always appreciated your just, I don't know, your energy and your marketing savvy, which mean we might tap anyway, 
when we deal with the community, our uh, annual report to finally get that out. So I look forward to picking your brain, even though you're two blocks away, but I know because we've got free parking, you'll be at the Wilmette Library. <laughs> I, I continue to be a, an active member of the Wilmette Library, and I'm happy to help the library in any way I can going forward that's within the rules. So yes. Okay. So. Any other? Does anybody else want to say anything? I do. Be yeah. summer, and then we'll do Fishman. Yeah, um, you know, uh, Stuart, so in such a short time we work, but I have so valued your input. I think you're always so well prepared for the meetings and, you know, I think you give great insight. So I really, I'm, I'm very sorry that you're leaving. I wish you the best and I do hope you stay in touch and um, continue to give your any input you have. So thank you. You're Trustee. welcome. I will, yes. I will do that. Trustee Fishman? I, I will second that, of course, um, known you a little bit longer, having been on the board now um, for a little bit. And um, Stuart, and bringing you back, you know, your, your um, clarity and your um, vision always comes through. I, I always think you're the voice of reason and um, so appreciate your, your um, you just laser focus point of view. And thank you for, um, again, um, reiterating that the library, our public library is for everyone and we serve all points of view. And uh, right, there's there's so much going on um, out now in, in the media and, and that's it's it's could be here very soon, but hopefully um, that's will always be our charge um, to serve the entire um, patrons, all the patrons of Wilmette Kenilworth and surrounding areas. So thank you for bringing that once again to um, the forefront. But thanks for everything that you've done. And, and again, your voice of reason is, is so welcome. And we'll, we know we will always be in touch. Thanks so much. You're welcome. <clears throat> OK, any other comments? I have to move at this time to accept the resignation of trustee Stuart Wolf, effective 731-22. Is there a second? With heavy heart, I'll second. Okay, it's been moved by trustee McDonald and seconded by trustee Fishman to accept the resignation of trustee Stuart Wolf, effective 731-2022. Can we have a roll call? Sure. Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes, sadly. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes, but thank you for all your time and dedication. Trustee Riddle. Also, sadly, yes. We'll miss you, Stuart. Trustee Summer. Yes, with regret. I assume I call you, since it's the roll call, Trustee Wolf. I'll abstain. <laughs> <laughs> And hey. Trustee McDonald. Uh, uh, yay. And uh, so the motion passed with six yays, one abstention. And at this point, we'll send you an email as to what the next steps are for legal, re in terms of legal reason, instead of legal, and be asking some of your feedback. So we'll cover that probably at the next meeting now that he has resigned and there's another process to do it. So thank you. So is there any other new business? That was enough new business, Stuart. No more. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> right. So can we have an adjournment? I'll, I'll motion to adjourn and thank you for letting me lead the motions tonight. <laughs> so. <laughs> so it's been, uh, is there a second? Oh, I can second. Okay. Trustee Wolf has moved to adjourn at 7.49 p.m. and it's been seconded by Trustee Summer. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. The motion, the, uh, the meeting adjourns at 7.50 p.m. And thank you. <laughs>